to know uh, maybe after this workshop if anybody is using like Cubase or Pro Tools or Razor, can you do that? Can you? I would like. I, I, I'm not too sure. I'm not. I'm not in those environments such such um, heavily as I used to be. But I I knew that before I discovered this, if I was working on this 100 and beat, uh, 20 beats um, loop. And if I wanted to go to a 99 beat, I'd have to load a uh, entirely different um, project to do so. Now, so in Ableton Live 9, you have these new um, conversion um, uh, opportunities here. So I can convert that sound, the harmony to a new MIDI track. I can tr convert the melody to a new MIDI track or I can convert the drums to a new MIDI track. So when I convert the harmony, well, let's play the loop first. So here's just uh, something that I actually played off of an analog synthesizer. Just playing. Now that's audio, as you can see here. So in Live 9, it's possible to um, obtain the many notes that I play from this segment of audio. So when I say convert uh, the harmony of this uh, file to a new MIDI track, now it will assign that to a, a rack. Um, suitable and let's see what we have here and here's my original file now you still hear a few notes you still hear a few notes and that's where that's where the person that is really going to use this function and if he's skilled enough is going to have to discern between what notes uh, stay in, belong to the file and which ones don't. See right there I can tell you can so here now now a lot of uh, there are a lot of um, uh, note editing um, features or transformation tools available so first uh, is this which I love so before you would have to use a modifier key to switch, turn the, uh, the tool pin on and off, or off. So all I have to do now is just hit the uh, B key. That's all I have to do. So I know that this note here does not belong. And, uh, okay, so I'm gonna raise that up. Actually, folding it will, will, will help. That'll actually help a lot. So right there, that note, it doesn't belong. And I only know that because I know what I played and I'm hearing what I shouldn't be hearing. That's perfect. That's what I played. And with... Now some people might see this and still say, well, big deal, what, what's, so, what's so special about that? Well, uh, I mean, if you're remixing something and somebody gave you a stem of just um, an audio file of, of, of something that they play, now you can obtain the MIDI information from that clip. And now you have the ability of, of creating a Creating a, a unique library of MIDI clips that you couldn't play or if you don't play. Or, but I like to I like to um, learn how to play these because I've been playing for a while, and you will need to know a little bit of music theory to capitalize on this function in my opinion. So now I can export that MIDI clip. But uh, 
Now, how would I use this? Now, this this is I probably can't because I can't I can't see the channels I want to sign it. But this is really important. So I have this right here, right? That's the MIDI information. So what I would do is load in another VST, and that that. Um, I'll have to explain how the browse is reorganized next. But what I would do is go into my plugins and load in a VST uh, here and then assign that MIDI channel to play the notes from that harmony here to play uh, the VST. So you could start from scratch on a default patch and start synthesizing your way up to the desired sound that's playing that MIDI clip. And that's going to be huge. Have you, this, this works best for solo instruments, right? Like piano on its own, a, a synth on its own, a guitar on its own. Have you had time to experiment whether it works well with two instruments, say a bass and a piano, and whether it's able to that's what I'm. That's exactly what I'm testing on. I have a lot of different examples. Um, some people still can't really uh, grasp their head around what's what's taking place. Some people are like, well, what's the big deal? I don't even know what he's doing or why is that important at all? That's really important because I could have this MIDI information playing, triggering a VST. And that's how you want to use that. And I don't think a lot of people have, um, probably haven't been indicated that that's the power behind doing that. So I could have a Rhodes playing this, I could have a completely different, I could have like, um, uh, tension or uh, electric piano or uh, another Ableton Live like analog, I can have that uh, that instrument playing that MIDI file. Um, I'm, I'm working heavily with this, so let's look at another clip. So here. Oh. Let's see what we now. Now, if you already have a MIDI channel open, you could just drag this clip there, and 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 you could, uh, instead of going to the command, the context menu and doing it, you could just drag the clip to that harmony to MIDI channel and select it. Now, I'll solo it. You hear those notes. So why do you hear those? Why do you hear those notes playing? Well, it's picking up a lot of the transients from a lot of the other instruments in that loop. So that's why you will. It's not. It's not a one cure, one click button cure all function. You have to be really skillful enough to know to match up what what you previously heard to what you want to hear, and that that in itself, and that's it. What? Sorry, what, what if the particular scene has heavily delayed to it? Can it be as a, a delay? Or? I don't think that would, um, I don't think that would matter. And I actually, I put a filter on one of these samplers to try to eliminate some of the notes and it just took it. It, it didn't, the filter didn't even matter. It, the, the filter didn't eliminate some notes. Now, a lot of, a lot of here, a lot of, um, no editing tool functions are really cool. So here, a lot of new no editing functions and features. And again, so if I, really cool is to just, before the, you'd have to like turn that on and hit like command plus B or something to get that. You still can do that. You still can command plus B, but now you don't need the, the modifier key. All you can do is just press the B key. That's really speeds speeds you up a lot. So now uh, you can do it. every note triggers. And you can do stuff like that. Or here, you can just draw up from this note field here. You can type in the note. Um, now if you were to select You were to select a group of notes, and if you hit the zero, you can toggle them on or off. So now, now when I toggle zero, it's going to mute them. 
See? Oh, and you hear those other notes? So right there, you can kind of discern what notes need to um, be deleted. And that, that's going to help you because this function will not work 100% without some involvement or some uh, work um, related to getting the, the file or notes that simply pertain to it. So back on. That right there needs to go. And there are some, there should be some more notes. This note goes. And see, you can, these go. That goes. That, 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 that. see, you can hear it. Okay, so that go, you know, that goes. I can and just take it and see how I'm see how I'm scrolling continuously I'm continuously scrolling with the shift key and the space bar because if I just hit the space bar I'm starting it over but so you could um, do a lot of functions now. Now, another really cool thing concerning editing would be if I were to select these notes, now I can stretch these notes. These notes can be stretched. And that's going to affect the timing. So here. So you could kind of create like a time stretched effect on the notes that are in the sequence. Uh, here um, I can um, I could play these these specific notes at double speed or I could slow them down by a factor of two. something like that. Uh, now um, here, so now this is another really cool feature. So um, let's say that is like um, three bar, this, this is a two bar loop, right? So now what I can, there's a duplicate button here. But so now that's just duplicates the loop. Really helpful to have that there. So here we had that with the duplicate button. It makes the loop uh, twice a week without having to do this anymore, without having to do this and command, um, copy and paste it to a new bar. That's no longer needed. Um, now, legato feature is uh, a function is really cool. So now when I hit legato, so I would you know, you could select a specific note to apply the legato to. Or you could, the entire, you could uh, phrase. Now you could also um, reverse the chord progression where you, the Last note becomes the first, and the first becomes the last. You can invert where the top note becomes the bottom, and the bottom becomes the top. So when we did it, now when we revert, when we invert that, then uh, they, they, these two notes flip themselves. So you can have a lot of fun with the um, transformation tools. Now the, uh, the browser has been completely reorganized. So um, basically you have um, uh, the ability to search any folder that you put in the places. You know, so now I have all of my packs here. 
Uh, the user library will contain any preset that um, I created. So if I had a reverb um, uh, preset that I like, it will be stored here. Um, here's my Live 8. Now, in Live 9, there is not a place by default where your projects can be saved. So you have to uh, create a folder and a, a, a path for that. So I just named mine Live 9 Arrangements. Um, and say, so all you do is just say add folder and it'll pop up. And if you don't like that folder, you have to, um, the ability to delete it. But, and I, so I added my entire hard drive so I can so search for like audio files. And see, start my entire, my entire computer. Um, I would, I would recommend, um, I would recommend uh, putting your entire hard drive in, and then everything on your hard drive is searchable. Um, now, another cool thing is when you search, um, when you search for like maybe something called like a base, um, something like so, or snare, or you could do like. Um, Or if I um cake, um, I think you have to have a now another another cool like um so the each um preset can be audition, which is really cool. Another really cool thing. So here, um, let's say here, um, I like I like this with uh, let's say like um, an audio effect of uh, uh, let's say I like that one channel with these effects on it. Now I have the ability to save that channel uh, and every time I create a new channel that those effects will be on that channel so command T so all those effects become copied with that channel so I'll undo that so now I would have to um, delete those out to get back to the default. 